Well, it was a big week for tech, and Yahoo Finance's Dan Howley got a front row seat at CES in Las Vegas. Now, he had a chance to speak with Willie Pell, Blue River Technology VP of Autonomy and New Ventures, hitting on the latest innovations, delivering products that enable farmers to work efficiently, sustainably, and profitably. Take a listen. The big machine you see here is called Seed Spray. Right? So what this is is an agricultural sprayer that is equipped with cameras and computers. And what you can do is you drive this machine over your crop, and it can detect the crop and detect the weeds with the cameras and in real time compute what's what and spray only the weeds. So it's so, only hitting what it should, what it needs to and not what it shouldn't. Correct. Okay. So the traditional way that you would control weeds in farming is you get a genetically modified seed and then you spray the entire field, right? And so we're saving farmers lots and lots of money, like 70% of the herbicide bill by only spraying the weeds. Um, uh, and it's just much better for the environment. So I. I know that you have this, uh, we can't obviously see it right now, but it's the, uh, the exact shot. What does is, what is that do exactly? Okay, so that is a, uh, that's a planting technology. And so what that's doing is, uh, as the seed goes in the ground, it gives it this tiny little shot of espresso uh, fertilizer. Um, very small amount, um, but very powerful, right? So usually the way people uh, um, uh, apply fertilizer and planting is they'll just spray everything right you fertilize all the ground in between the seeds, all. which isn't actually valuable right all that all that nitrogen ends up running off into the rivers and so we love these areas where we can save farmers money and make farming easier and more sustainable as a business but also uh environmentally as well so yeah and so both of those things fit that really well i guess how much more efficient can kind of uh, a farmer be right i mean you know you oh have gosh. these huge areas that you're covering so we think um it's a big question, um, and I can have a pretty swaggy answer. Uh, what the, the place to start is called record-breaking corn growers. And so what they can do is, in, in, with non-economically scalable methods, grow 600 bushels in a single acre. Now, scalable methods will grow about 200 bushels an acre, right? So we think that there's a two to three X, there's about at least two X headroom on, 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 on growing more food with the same amount of land. Through this, this type of technology. Exactly this type of technology. Because basically the sensitivity, what that farmer does when he grows that big single acre is they walk the fields and they look at every single plant. And they treat every single plant as an individual, right? And they're looking at it and saying, this plant needs nitrogen, this plant doesn't, this plant needs, you know, this, that, and the other. This plant has a, a, a bug infestation. So what we want to do is literally scale what that guy's doing, what that farmer's doing as he's walking the field and just do that with equipment, right? Because um, you could never walk a thousand acres like that, but this machine could, and these cameras could, and they can slowly start to pick apart all of these um, kind of inefficiencies and, and eventually treat every plant like an individual plant rather than a monolithic species. I guess, you know, as far as the, the way this can help new farmers getting yes. uh, more women into farming, uh, gender non-conforming individuals into yeah. farming, how does this, does this help? And I guess, when can we expect to see, you know, autonomy really take over the entire I, industry? I think that maybe just as a big, it's a good question. I haven't thought about it, but I think um, as a big picture, it just makes farming easier. So if you think about anybody who doesn't want to sit in a machine for 12 hours a day, right? Um, you may love everything about farming, but when you're sitting in 12 hours a day, day in, day out, you might not like that. And whoever you are, they're probably gonna appreciate that, right? Yeah. Um, and so what autonomy does is it basically gives people their time back. Um, the, the, the real intellectual work of farming is around you know, understanding the weather, understanding what crop's gonna work in what region, when should you plant. Um, there are a lot of these sort of big, how do you market your crop? Um, how do you sell it? When do you sell it? How much do you sell? Like, these are like the real business decisions. And then there's just vast amounts of like fairly crank turning work that they have to do that involves like dozens and dozens of hours um, in these machines. And so we think that by um, reducing the need for that, that, uh, you know, someone who's intellectually very interested in farming, um, you might actually attract a new, uh, a new type of farmer. Uh, who, and whoever that may be, we don't know. Um, but, 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 but the goal is let's make it as easy as possible and let's um, have people do the things they're really uniquely qualified, that they're uniquely good at. Because we can't tell a farmer when to sell their crop. We can, we can drive back and forth in the field and do a job. Great stuff from Dan Howley there.